So I assume everybody here knows who Pinky is, or Nicole Pinky. It's a bit of a, a bit of a <laughs> guess which one to go with. Um, but I've been a huge fan of Pinky's work for so, oh, so much time now. Following her work with Mac, and I've seen you've done some shoots with Alice McCall lately, oh, which yes. are absolutely stunning. Yes. Um, and I even just saw her create a couple looks earlier, and they're to die for. So I can't wait for everyone to see that. Yeah. But I think um, one thing that may be on everyone's minds here is how did the name Pinky come about? <laughs> um, yeah, it's not, yeah, did the hair come first or did the, the name come first? Um, <laughs> I look. I don't know. I don't know where my love of pink came from. I was a tomboy um, that played with trucks, and I certainly wasn't into anything pink growing up. But um, it actually started. So the brand manager at Mac. Um, so I've worked with Mac for. 14 years, oh, I'm very, I started very young. Um, I started very young and the brand manager at the time, she started calling me Pinky um, because I had pink hair. Oh, it's not too scientific there. Had pink hair and then when Instagram first started, um, I'm not sure if many of you remember, some people are in here old enough to remember. Um, it wasn't as much about, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a self advertising program that it is today. And it was all about kind of taking pictures of your food and your family, that was all it was. And I wanted to give myself a name on Instagram that nobody would really know who it was. I didn't have my actual name on there for quite some time until I started to realize how, that it could benefit my career and that you put all your work on there. And so, but I, by that time I'd already done the pinky with all the, with all the I's and the E's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was no pinky with a Y. Um, <laughs> it was so annoying. I didn't think that it would take off. And then yeah. now I get call sheets with it on there, like pinky Thompson, which I find I have a little <laughs> laugh every time or just pinky. And it makes me feel like Madonna. <laughs> So you respond to both. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take whatever you get, whatever yeah, I can get. Yeah. yeah. No, it's easy to remember. I think it's, um, yeah. People, yeah. I think, have forgotten my actual name. No, yeah. I mean, I had to think of your actual name when I, when I saw that you were coming in. But I guess um, one thing, so we've got a lot of makeup students in here, and I'm sure that they've all had different inspirations that led them down that path. But I think what we're all wondering is, um, what inspired you? Was it someone or something to yeah. go down the makeup path? Um, I always loved makeup. I, uh, going into high school, I always wore a, like a ton of makeup, perhaps too much, some would say. <laughs> whatever. Um, I did look like kind of a, a matte corpse with red lipstick yeah. on um, at, in high school and I would always get in trouble in high school from touching up my makeup and um, not doing or paying attention to my studies. Um, look at me now I should say. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then yeah so I always loved makeup and then after school I was always doing my friends makeup and chucking glitter on people, still am. Um, now I just made a career out of it but the um, I would always do their makeup, but I had a boyfriend at the time who I was I was in a job. I used to do decorating and merchandising with furniture and flowers and making bed canopies and like cushion decorating. It was it was it was fun. It was fun, but you know when you have a breakup with someone who's like dyed their hair or cut all their hair off when you have a breakup. Anybody? Yeah, yeah. Like having a, like a crying moment in the mirror, like. <laughs> Basically, I kind of cut all my hair off, went a bit crazy, um, and I was still pretty young at the time. But I met a new boy, and um, I kept him. We're married now, um, but he, <laughs> but he just said to me one day, he's like, "Why don't you think about makeup?" Because I was a bit bored, and I was like, "What is that a thing? Is that a?" Because it wasn't, it wasn't, I guess, as easy. Or it wasn't well, not easy. Easy is a very strong word, um, but it wasn't as easily available, um, I guess, at the time. So 15 years ago is when I sort of started doing it. And it was, I thought, okay, yeah, great. I looked into it and thought, I want to do blood guts and gore and all that good stuff and I want to work on movies. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I went and studied and I realised I hated the word continuity and I didn't want to, <laughs> I was like, no, nah, I am not patient enough. I just want to yeah. chuck makeup on someone and then leave. Um, and, <laughs> and yeah, so I kind of, I, I'm very impulsive and I just, I found a college in Sydney that I went to, so I went to Acmuse in Sydney. Um, went and met with them, loved them, and just quit my job and kind of started. It was really quick, and I, I quit my main job, became a waitress, um, and that supported me through doing makeup. <laughs> well, I guess that, that probably leads me on to my next question. Sorry, that was a really long answer. No, that was fantastic, but it actually makes me think. So you were working as a waitress. What kind of kickstarted <laughs> Not a good your waitress. career over to makeup? Yeah, well, yeah, so I was doing that. So I sort of did waitressing while I was just supporting myself through college and figuring that out and then going into makeup. After I finished 
at college, I did a whole bunch of work experience and I was sort of um, dibble dabbling around and trying to find that elusive, you know, open door to walk through, jump through. And um, I heard about this kind of cuckoo place called Mac. Um, and, you know, I was like, I need to go. People I, I studied makeup with were talking about this crazy brand called Mac. And um, I thought I better go past the one of the counters and have a look. And everybody was like colored hair and covered in tattoos. And like it was loud music. And basically yeah. people were wearing their underwear as long as it was black. And I'm like, I need to work there. So that kind of. <laughs> And I didn't look, I didn't have coloured hair at this point. So yeah. I, you know, so I just like, I found like, I, that was like a found kind of home there, I guess, or yeah. place that let me be really comfortable. Um, yeah, and that kind of, that pushed me in. And then um, it's kind of, I, yeah, I'm still working with them. So yeah. it's exciting. So. <laughs> yeah, that's honestly so inspirational how you stayed with Matt for so long. Mm. And oh. <laughs> no, it's, I mean, it's, 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 no, it's an amazing brand and now like I've, everything that you've done you've got this book which is incredible yeah. and i'm sure you know going back to when you started could yeah. you have imagined this coming along no not <laughs> at all not at all because i was really shy i didn't know what i wanted to do and i didn't yeah. know where my place was in the world and i just was trying to you know find myself and all that jazz and um yeah this is it's pretty crazy and so you found your love in makeup oh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and what part about it do you love the most um, I think, well, the makeup that I do now, I tend to, I guess, my home base of makeup, I do all types of makeup, so I've sort of done everything from TV to film and theatre, Cirque du Soleil, but I guess that's my, where I live now in makeup is probably is more fashion and editorial. And I love being able to do some kind of crazy makeup and turn you into a monster. Or I did a Halloween shoot recently <laughs> for a magazine, turn you into a veiny monster and then like drop the mic and leave and do like a glam, <laughs> like, a, like a, gla a glam makeup or yeah. some kind of girl covered in pink head to toe. Actually, I've done that, painted a girl head to toe pink. <laughs> um, you know, the next day. So I kind of, I love that it's different every day and, and every team is different, so which makes every job really different. So yeah. I've never really had two days the same. Yeah. yeah. But I think that's that's, that's good because I get bored part. easily. Yeah. So definitely always. a highlight of the creative industries. <laughs> yeah. Nothing's different. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's something that probably has changed is the industry over the years. You said you've been so, in the industry yeah. for 15 years. Yeah. Yeah. So There's I a couple imagine of other, other people in here who have to. <laughs> I was probably about I was probably about six then. Oh. So. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so if we go all the way back, I mean, what's the difference now between then? Um, I think that it wasn't. As I said, it wasn't as easy, um, like readily available. Yeah. I think, or not everyone wanted their makeup to be done. Yeah. <laughs> so now it's like it's just what you do. Like you get a new pair of shoes, you book in your glam, you, you you glam for the weekend. It's like it's part of the process of going out or going to a wedding is like getting hair and makeup done. And I think there's a few people that I've worked with for many years in the room, and I and even thinking back to when I first started at Mac, like we'd have people come in and get their makeup done, but it was it was really a special occasion, you know. It wasn't so it wasn't just a Thursday, you know, morning gonna get my face done. Um, so I think that is really cool. It's a good time to be in the beauty industry. Um, but the other thing is social media has changed everything. I mean, I think I, I um, knew my career before social media and after, and it's very different. And um, luckily, you guys who are studying now, you are able to put yourself out there and let other people, let, I guess, the industry or let um, your clients know who you are before you get to the job. Whereas yeah. it used to just be about first impressions, whereas first impressions don't really exist anymore. Everyone's already stalked each other on the internet before you get to the job. Um, you already, I do the same thing. I stalk the client. I find out, well, you know, so much, you, we all have done it, gone into a, and you're lying if you say you haven't. Um, but I know that people, I guess, have done the same thing to me because I, I have gone to a job and they're like, oh yeah, how's your daughter? And I'm like, I've never met you before. Uh, but I have, but I put it on, you know, put it on my Instagram. But yeah. so I think that is like a, a, um, a power that we never really had before. Yeah. Um, it used to just be, okay, you'd have your portfolio of work and you would print them or you'd have actual tear sheets from magazines, um, which is hilarious to think about, and they would go into a leather-bound book that cost a fortune, yeah. laughing over there, cost a fortune, you'd have your giant book that you could beat somebody up with um, and you'd take that to your clients or yeah. take that to, to impress people. Um, and I think that that's so funny, you know, and yeah. then we've, um, and also, 
I have an agent in Sydney and I used to just have to rely on what they would say about me to clients yeah. or how they would choose to sell me to get the job. But I realized that now I have the control about putting it out there myself and it made me more confident because I could, you know, it means now I'm getting the jobs that I feel like I should because maybe they know who I am, they can see that I'm colourful, they're not gonna, you know, I'm not overly serious about it, I wanna have fun with makeup. So I think I've ended up on some really cool jobs because of the control that you have with social media. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, it's like it's a complete digital portfolio for you. That yeah. You send notifications with as well, it's fantastic. Totally, it's also frightening because the internet is forever <laughs> and <laughs> that in itself is frightening. Yeah. All of my bad hairdos <laughs> and bad eyebrows are there forever. <laughs> But it means that, you know, you can't escape anything and people yeah. can find out things about you before you get to the job. Yeah. And I do know there's some jobs I haven't gotten because of my social media. So I guess it, what, the good comes with the bad. Yeah, yeah mm. absolutely. Well, I mean, on the topic of things being frightening, um, <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of so many different makeup horror stories. And I was just wondering if you have any yourself. <laughs> um, Yes, yes. I mean, I don't want to admit too many, but you know what? There's one because you. We were talking about this a little yeah. earlier, and there's one. And I say a friend. It's not just a friend, um, but one separate story about somebody like um, wiping duo glue onto somebody's face, like they thought it was moisturizer on the um, onto the palette. That wasn't me. But can you imagine? It's just a peel off mask that we're doing. Actually, I feel like that's what you could say now. Like yeah. you'd be like, it's the new mask. You need to go to go to, go to Mecca and get that new mask. Yeah, yeah, but I've done so many fashion weeks. So here and overseas, and every single fashion week, there's already there's always a bunch of people who take it way too seriously. Um, backstage, it's very dramatic, and everybody is loud and dramatic. And I do remember one show where I got moisturizer on a dress. So just before they're about to go onto the catwalk, it doesn't sound that well. Yeah, you know, and if there's fashion people in here, they're like, Whoa, like oh my God, and I wanted to die. I wanted the world to swallow me up. And I've and since then, I've seen that happen to other people. But I have a lesson because what I had is I was doing moisturizer on the legs, and you put it on your outside of your hand, and that's what happened. I was like wiped it on. So now you put it on the inside. I've told everybody. So then if you walk, if you, it you only goes on you. It only someone. goes on you, and then you're covered in moisturizer, yeah. but nothing else gets dirty. So there, take that, take that. <laughs> what but that was, was what was the material? It was like, oh, I can't even remember. I don't know. I think I went into like, I, I was like, had a fit and just like smoke bombed it out yeah. of it. No, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. God. Yes. Well, we've learned. Awesome. You've lived and you've learned. <laughs> I have. Yeah, I didn't die. Thank God. Well, I mean, I think that's probably an advice for everyone to take home. No more strides on the back of Be the head. Be careful around beautiful clothes. Yep. Yes. Um, I guess maybe something going on to advice <laughs> and also talking about Instagram. What are your main resources for, in, for inspiration? Is it something like social, that's Instagram or? Yeah, of course. I mean, thank God for social media, we can see what everybody else is doing, right? So we can see what everyone's doing. So you may think, take a different path. You know, yeah. if you've seen a bunch of people are using gloss, maybe you're gonna choose to use matte. Like I think, yeah. I think looking for inspiration is different to copying and sometimes that can somehow get twisted up <laughs> and you know, because everything has been done, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. So it's how can you find a way to make it your own with inspiration? Yeah. I love Instagram, of course. We, all, I mean, how many hours a day? We don't actually wanna count up how many hours a day we spend on Instagram yeah. or social media and Pinterest. <laughs> Who else has been in a Pinterest vortex for like hours? <laughs> I've gone long. deep into a Pinterest <laughs> vortex. Um, it's hard to get out, yeah. But I love social media, but then I love and hate it once again because then you see a lot of what other people are doing and you're like, oh, now I can't do that, somebody else has done it. Or, yeah. you know, it's so, it messes with your head, it does. But I love to look beyond makeup, I guess, for inspiration because if you only are looking at other makeup for inspiration, then you end up somehow subconsciously, whether you like it or not, or mean to or not, you somehow end up doing similar things. So it's trying to, search for other places for inspiration yeah. so you bring some originality right yeah. so because it's, it's so many people are doing makeup now yeah. so i mean look i love art gallery i spent a lot of time in oh, sydney nice. at the art gallery in new south wales um and i love the gallery here i never get enough time when i'm here but art i mean look it's very cliche to say that i go to the art gallery um but also like when i'm walking down the street i mean my phone I have the most amount of memory I've ever had on a phone. I feel like a proper grown up um, because I just have so many photos and videos of things that are just on the street yeah. and like a color, color combination of a wall or like screenshots of things that I've seen and just, I don't know, it is everywhere. Once yeah. again, to say that is kind of funny, but looking beyond makeup for your inspiration is yeah. what I do too. No, I think that's a really good tip and that's something to take away for everyone in all creative industries, I guess. Yeah, and fashion yeah. too. I mean, yeah. you're all in, it's all in one building here. Yeah. You kind of got it all, but yeah. um, looking at fashion because essentially yeah. that's that's the other missing. It's hair, makeup, 
the fashion, the whole it's the whole, yeah, yeah, it's the whole puzzle. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, oh, that's it's really kind of insightful. Even just thinking of art, and I guess um, on the on the topic of the makeup itself, yeah, I think a lot of us are wondering if you have any go to products or must haves in your makeup kit, especially like when you're traveling around. <laughs> Look what I just happened to have. <laughs> it's, it's magical. Um, I'll get up, but I'm look. I'm not going to go through. I'm going to use a lot of products so you'll see them. But the biggest thing that the biggest thing for me that has made my kit like super happy, <laughs> my kit's happy, and me is everything in like clear bags that stand up. Yeah. So I've discovered that about myself is that I love to be able to do this. I hate rustling around in pencil cases to find a pencil. So I like to be able to see everything and pull everything out. So I really love that. And I really love, you know, and feel free at the end to come and have a look because it's like, it's kit porn. You know, I <laughs> love it. I love going through people's kits. So I totally get it. And I always, if someone's got a makeup kit open, I'm going to rustle around. Um, but yeah, so I love all these clear bags, things that are like square that can I can grid up. And my actual kit is, um, I, I've tried a lot of different things and nothing is ever perfect. We always see somebody else's kit and then you're like, oh no, now I need to redo my entire kit because I love what you've done. But I think the one, um, I don't have it in here now, but the one case, I've got a Burton um, case and I'm absolutely loving that because of the wheels. So I've gone through so many suitcases and so many things and the wheels are always the thing to break this because they're not used to carrying around one million, pounds, you know, one million kilograms of product. So the Burtons have rollerblade wheels and so they're really strong. So they're a really good investment and they're, they're tough. And also like palettes that aren't, I mean, essentially these are cardboard, right? I mean, there's a million, there's Z palettes and a bunch, like things that are light. If you, I mean, I'm guessing that everyone in here, and if you haven't been, you're crazy. You haven't been to Muji then. I just don't even know. I don't even know how you're living your life without going to Muji. And I have so many tiny little bottles and small things. And I remember when I first started building my kit and I was so desperate to have all the brands in there. And I'm like, oh, I'm never gonna have it. I remember, you know, I'm never gonna have everything that I want. Yeah. And I didn't want to decant anything out of the beautiful Mac bottle or Armani if I spend my entire pay on it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, whatever, whatever you've spent all your hard earned money on. Yeah, I didn't want to decanter it and put it into a tiny bottle, but then the less I, you know, the, the further I went with it, I realized it's not, it's people aren't looking that much into it as, as you are. And it's, but so decantering into plastic bottles is very <laughs> smart. Yes. And yes. they don't break? They don't break. They do explode. That's always a fun. That's always a fun day when something's exploded. This morning, it's either glitter. I remember when I got to New York once, and I had a shoot the next day. I arrived the night before, at like 10 p.m., and there was glitter in my. Opened it up, and it was covered in like chunky glitter. Like not even like oh the small glitter. I don't even know. I don't know what would be worse. But it was like chunky glitter, and I just was like, ah, no. no. And I just shut it, and I had to throw the suitcase away. I d well, not there. That was all, it was all very dramatic. But um, I figured it out by that time. When I got home, my husband was like, can we like gurney it? Like high pressure hose. He's like trying to, I'm like, no, it's oh God. God. I just, tears. Yeah. So lesson learned to keep the glitter closed. Yes. Oh my God. Put sure. your tape, put gaffer tape around yeah. your, um, if you've got them in jars, put gaffer tape up the side. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. there you go. Well, I guess that's one lesson that we could all learn. So many um, lessons. <laughs> but on, yeah, I guess, do you have, what's the biggest lesson you've learned? in your time? Um, not everyone will like you and that's okay. I think um, I, I spent a long time, we constantly are looking for validation. Um, I, I now know because I've just brought out a book. I mean, I've, you know, that I'm constantly, do you like it? Hope you like it. Well, yeah, I'd enjoy it. You know, it's this feeling of putting yourself out there. So validation, it, it's very important to creative people, yeah. but sometimes people are not going to like you. People that don't, I, I get a lot of positive comments about pink hair now, but it's taken a long time of being in the industry and people not liking it or treating me badly because I have pink hair or kind of treating me differently because of that and taking a lot of like willpower to not, or not willpower, but like I guess inner strength, whatever, to kind of push past that, past that yeah. and not be kind of marred by it because you can't control what other people think yeah. of you. You just put yourself out there and be, I guess, you know, be a good person or yeah. whatever, a bad person if you want to do that too. Yeah. But you know, you can't, you just actually can't control it. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's a hard industry. Like people are tough. People are superficial. It's first, you know, people have an opinion based on what they've first seen, and and I happen to put out a really loud picture, so I have to. <laughs> but it's something that I've I guess had to be aware of because I would always I guess get upset 
myself, I wouldn't say it out loud to the person, but I would get upset because people would think that I couldn't do anything besides crazy makeup, or I can only do bold looks. And look, I love bold looks. Like, you know, if you ask me to do nothing, I'm a bit like, okay, right? <laughs> but, you know, we're in Australia and they do love natural beauty, you know, yeah. so, um, but it was, people would just assume, it's like if I go to a hairdresser, and if you go to a hairdresser and you see somebody with like a green mullet, so you don't like people who want a balayage won't run towards the person with a green mullet, right? They'll think that somehow you're going to end up with a green mullet. But I will go towards that person because I love that. But you know what I mean? So I think it's being aware of whatever you look like and um, tweaking your energy to suit because I guess yeah. people are going to form an opinion and that's okay. Yeah. Um, but it's making sure that you understand that what you put out there. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That's, yeah that's honestly, that probably answers <laughs> my next question about what it's like to collaborate and oh, yeah. overcoming any creative differences. But again, is it more of a thing down. of resilience? Yeah. We're halfway down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, and creativity is really hard to argue. It's really because it just becomes about you and what you want, you yeah. know? And I think it, depending on the job, remembering that it's not about what you and you, yeah. what you, oh, sorry, touching that microphone. Um, <laughs> it's not about you, it's about the project or yeah. what you're doing. And, you're and, and that's hard because at the end of the day, you want a really good picture yeah. or you want to make sure that you're getting something that's really valuable, yeah. you know, for everybody. It's hard, but I think stepping back and realizing the, I guess, the overall picture or the overall mood of what you're trying to create and not just pushing your your thought process onto, onto a job. Um, yeah. And I think, yeah, and creative, and as I said, creative differences are hard because I, let me tell you, I've butted heads <laughs> with a lot of people. But I've also <laughs> learned to kind of step back and be like, hey, maybe I didn't get that win that day. Yeah. I'll get and the it, next and one. Owning it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think, for, again, we do have some newcomers in the industry, but I'm sure you have, have advice for everyone on what would be your career advice for Ooh, ideally. Big. Yeah, ideally <laughs> someone that wants to follow in your career path. Um, for, extremely important. And I know we were talking about this earlier. I asked yeah. you actually if there's work experience here. And I'm so happy to know that you, you guys do get work experience because it's hard, yeah, and extensive, like, you know, yeah, which is great. And um, because you can learn all you want about, like, and you can be so skilled at doing, like, the most amazing eyeliner, but if you don't know how to act on set or when to go forward, when to step back, when to jump in, when to have an opinion, when to not have an opinion, um, the, the makeup is only half of it. Like the, the, it's actually only half of it because you can be really good as, I always go to eyeliner. You can be really good at eyeliner, but if you're an asshole, you're not going to get that job again. You know, you're not going to get rebooked um, because people kind of, they have to want to be around you. That's, that's what our job is being around other people. If only we could just be by ourselves yeah. doing makeup and actually making money. And I know that's what YouTube is, but not everyone's making money on YouTube either. You know, so to get rebooked and to get jobs. So assisting, I learned so much by assisting um, people early on. Um, and you know, assisting your teachers, you what maybe you want to do, and you think that's a really good idea, or maybe what you don't want to do. Yeah. Um, I've also I've assisted people and gone, oh, that was an <laughs> awkward day, you know, or or maybe I wouldn't do it like that, or I'm really different, you know. But it's good to see how yeah. things get done. Totally. And also, uh, assisting is you get to see it all happen, but the pressure's not on you. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And do you think do you think something like assisting is a great way for people to you know in creatives in general to establish cre credibility or are there other do you have other recommendations for that yeah I mean I think I noticed a, a big difference from when I even so I worked at Mac for a long t you know I've worked at Mac for a long time and I worked on counter um, and I you know I worked part-time while I was kind of trying to figure out where I was going with makeup and I was assisting at the same time um, and then I, I became manager of a counter and then I became the senior artist um, at Mac but when I went to from, I guess, counter to senior artist, which was on counter, I'm dealing with people who are coming in and they're coming in for makeup. So I knew what they wanted, right? They, they weren't coming in to get their hair done at Mac, yeah. right? So I knew yeah. what they wanted when they were coming to Mac. Um, but when I was in this other role of being an ambassador, I had to deal with 90% public, not internal Mac mostly. Yeah. And so I was going like, kind of into the industry and onto shoot sets and not really knowing it was really hard making that transition and so but but having assisted so many big makeup artists in um, Sydney and being on a lot of sets and meeting a lot of assistants um, and just people knowing you so like yeah. you know so you might go yeah that guy with the great hair that's him over there um, you know he's got great hair um, but you know that what you get to know that girl with a great headscarf she wears a really great headscarf all the yeah. time it's like being being at top of mind and people knowing the girl with the pink hair yeah. you know and then when I was suddenly kind of thrust onto the I guess into that um, environment it wasn't as hard because I had been 
in there and um, so people are like oh, yeah I think I worked on that job with you and that it yeah it's kind of I guess a bit of exposure beyond learning it's good to have a bit of exposure yeah. to other people um, yeah and that kind of comes into taking opportunities I guess they take of, everything yeah take everything no take everything <laughs> take everything I used to say never say no but I also think you should have a life as well yeah. um, <laughs> so saying yes more than you say no yeah even Love if it's it. not like paying you you know sometimes you get paid in other ways well, I guess... Oh, that sounded saucy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that, guys. Oh, my gosh. Won't work out well. well. I guess one thing that you definitely did say yes to is this book, which is yes. amazing. So let's talk a bit about making it up. Let's. How did, how did it come about? How did the concept come up? Um, so New Holland Publishers, um, I, I, I happened to know a girl who worked at the, um, who worked at New Holland. It was actually quite simple, you know, she wrote me a message and said, have you ever thought about writing a book? <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, I've thought about it, but wait, what does this even mean? Because I've, you know, I've done editorial, but I've yeah. not gone into publishing in that way. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, yeah, of course. Like, what do we, what happens here? She's like, okay, well, have you got any like ideas about what you would want to do? And I'm like, yeah, I've got heaps of ideas. So many ideas. I'm going to put them all together. I had no ideas. I had no <laughs> ideas. And I was like, but that's kind of how I'm making it up is what's why it's called that. Because I've, that's how I've gotten through my entire career is I just jump in and then figure it out afterwards. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing to follow, but no, I, I don't know. I just impulsive, jump in, see what happens. You'll, you'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and so I started to think about, I guess, what that would look like and yeah. or what I would want a book to look like. And I I had so many other makeup books. I have so many makeup books and I, you know, Kevin Aquan and Ray Morris and, um, you know, even stage makeup books. I've got heaps of old stage makeup books that I've kind of collected from different vintage stores because they're really interesting to kind of see really how to highlight and contour um, beyond just shimmery highlight and contour. Um, and... I, I had so many books and I was like, oh, okay, what am I going to do that's different? Because I don't want to make something the same because that's, I mean, how boring. Yeah. And also, I hate rules. Like, I hate rules I, with makeup or anything. I always, you know, find a way to kind of annoy people and break the rules <laughs> a little bit. But then, so I went to the publisher and I met with the, <laughs> met with the like, managing director. I was really scary just put it once again and had this little presentation and a PowerPoint presentation um, about what, and I just said, okay, well, the first thing is if you want to, beauty rule book you need to ask somebody else because I wouldn't even know how to do it like I it just it's so boring um, but it's also it's not my style of doing makeup yeah. um, anyway so I just talked to them how I wanted it to be like inclusive and colorful and fun and doesn't take itself too seriously and easy to read I don't want you know I just want it to kind of and that's probably my favorite thing about what the after people have um, I guess tagged me on Instagram or written me messages saying I can hear you talking through the pages you're talking at me through yeah. the pages but I think that's quite fun because at least it's like conversational that's how I would want yeah. to read something yeah. um, and how we read blogs and you know yeah so, well yeah. I can say having had a look it's far from boring far from a rule book <laughs> oh, good um, it's uh, if you guys haven't had a look yet it's incredible what was what was your favorite part about making it we've got a few more questions and then we'll jump into a demo guys Yay. um <laughs> It was such an experience. It was really, um, I did not know what I was getting myself into. And when, so Stephen Popovich, who shot the entire book, he's a good friend of mine and we've done a lot of editorial together. And he was the first person I thought of um, calling because I knew how much work would be into it because I didn't want to include, basically I didn't want to include pictures that are of my work that I'd already done. You yeah. know? So I didn't want it to like call back on things that I'd already done. I wanted the entire thing to have new pictures. But what comes with that is so many new pictures and um, I thought who is patient and lovely and yeah. knows me and who can I rip into this with that you know and anyway he said yes kind of before I was finished the sentence like do you want to do it and he's like yes and then I said okay we've we've got five days to shoot the entire thing <laughs> he's like how many pages is it it's 285 pages oh my <laughs> but he also in five days he shot 20,000 photos oh my Gosh. And trying to, yeah, I know. He, he's like, oh, I'm gonna kill you. You know, like, <laughs> we all lost weight. We all lost a lot of weight. No, but we did that. Yeah, and so we shot the entire thing in five days, which That's I incredible. still can't really believe that that happened. Everybody yeah. it was a labour of love, and everybody was there. My husband produced it. He does have experience in that. I didn't just call him. <laughs> um, so he produced the shoot. I did the um, like the schedule because we had so many different models. You'll see when you flip through it because I didn't want there to be one face all the way through. I wanted all different models. And so I did the schedule and I've worked at Mac and I have done a fashion week schedule before. So I thought if I can do a 40, 40 show fashion week schedule, I can do this. So yeah. that 
was a good experience. But then we had to do a casting and make sure we had a beautiful selection of like of great looking girls and boys um, in there. And yeah, the whole thing, that was my favorite part was shooting it because my mum made food, my husband's mum made food, my like everybody was there to help and it was such a nice experience of just really lovely people and we, we had like a rule like no dickheads allowed on set. <laughs> and um, <laughs> No dickheads, Sorry, no swear. rules. Yeah, no rules, yeah. no dickheads. And um, <laughs> it was just such a, it was such an amazing week. And my best friend, who's a hairstylist in New York, um, with the Wall Group, he happened to be here for Christmas and stayed. Um, so this is only in January when we shot it, yeah, well. and um, we put it together. So we shot it in January and had to have the, I had to have the manuscript, oh. write it, and the manuscript by the second week of March. Wow. That's yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> Incredible was crazy. turnaround. Yeah. <laughs> kind of terrifying. <laughs> and then I've but, also got a job and, and a family. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know. I don't know. I didn't sleep. I haven't really slept this year at no. all. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's, it, I'm so stoked with the results. So I'm really oh. excited. Yeah. And so for those that don't know, what will they find in your book? I feel like you get a good vibe after hearing this yeah. conversation. <laughs> I think, look, this, what I have learned with makeup is that it's never as complicated as people want to make it. I think it keeps a lot of people in jobs to make it seem like it's really hard, um, but it's actually really non, it's not that hard, or it's not that it's not that hard, but it's never as complicated. You never need as many steps as possibly yeah. you're seeing online. Um, so I really wanted to make it simple for beauty, people who love makeup. Um, it was definitely, you know, yeah, it's all about if you love makeup, but you didn't really know how to, you know, where to start. I wanted this to be kind of a really fun beauty bible um yep. kind of like a makeup wardrobe you know that yep. you should be able to like flick through it and open a different page each day and find something new on that page you don't have to read it from like cover to cover at all it's not that it's not a chronological story um and it should just be and beautiful imagery too so i just yep. wanted it to be like shot in a beautiful way and just a lot of fun yeah, yeah. well i have one or two last questions before yep. we jump into your tutorial or cool. your demo what do you think will be the next trend for 2019 Depends who you ask. I think trend is like the most overused word in the world right now. That you know, and just because you go on Instagram and the trend is plaited eyebrows, and I'm like, well, yeah. there might be five people who are doing it. Other people calling it a trend. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What I feel like I'm loving seeing is like electric blues and like primary colours and being used in everyday beauty, not just what you'd see on a catwalk. Yeah. I've sort of been doing Fashion Week for a long time and. A lot of the same things happen every year, and we're not supposed to say that, but essentially they come around again. You're like, oh, it's blue season again. You know, it's like it does happen, and they change the texture. It's a new technology and product. Um, but I'm I'm loving all these kind of primary colours that aren't just kept for the crazy. Like yeah. you're seeing more people kind of embracing it, do a pink eye, yeah. and not in a like diseasey kind of way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, definitely um, but, hope not. But that's yeah. fun too. I don't know. Metallics are super yeah. fun and always glitter. I feel like yeah. glitter has a place every season. In that yeah, area. totally. Always accept it. I'll always love it too. <laughs> and lastly, can you share with us one of your go-to makeup tips that works every time or almost every time? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, yeah, like every time. You know? I think after you do a false lash, like curling in, afterwards mm. like using a curler and not like hard <laughs> you know when you rip everything off and i'm sure maybe there's some teachers in here who are like oh, no, we have not said <laughs> being very gentle but like yeah. clamping them together really yeah. gently brings the whole thing together and it stops them looking like they're attacking your eyes like yeah. sometimes you put on an eyelash like hey this looked really good on my <laughs> other client and on this girl it's like why are they not going there so yeah. if you're clamping them together it can kind of bring them all together um Hi, like hydration, this is such a boring answer. This is like such a mum answer. But like <laughs> hydration, I, I think um, thinking beyond what you're slapping on the face and thinking underneath what you yeah. uh, what you put underneath totally. it, um, because that makes it makes all the difference. So actually yeah. paying attention to the skin, it's not just one product that's going to work, but actually talking to the person, making a recommendation, like when you go to a hairdresser, and not just like slapping on the same moisturizer on every person, because yeah. we all need something different. Like totally. makeup is a prescription. Awesome. Mm, yeah. I love that. Well, on that note, I think, does everybody want to see some makeup now? Yeah. No, they're like, they're like no, we hate makeup. <laughs> <laughs> so I might, I've, I've got Alexis and Lauren, who are two of our makeup students. So we'll have a little yeah. quick demo. So I might call Lauren up. Yes, come on. Seat. 